My name is George Gatesy, and I am co-founder and lead programmer at Battlegold Studios, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of my favorite features of Supreme Ruler 1936. Supreme Ruler 1936 is a geopolitical grand strategy game that features a lot of different elements, including diplomacy, research, economics, resources, but it also includes a very detailed strategy tactical war game element. Supreme Ruler 1936 is a real-time strategy game, but it also allows players to control the game speed. Players can play the game forward on slow to react to a tense battle, or on very fast to play through build-up periods. You can even pause to give orders or to examine the map. One of the features that sets Supreme Ruler 1936 apart is the scope of the simulation. You can be looking at the battle on a single front and giving orders to your forces at the battalion level. You can control individual units, stacks, battle groups, and other formations. Tactical elements such as terrain, transportation, and close combat are important, as are unit characteristics such as range, indirect fire, air support, and the protection of vulnerable units by armor and infantry. The front lines change as units attack and counterattack, and logistics play a crucial role as newly captured areas provide limited resupply. Then from the heat of the battle, you can zoom out and see the action in other parts of the world. Here I can zoom into Eastern Africa and see what the Italians are up to. From there, I can then zoom over to see what is happening in Asia, including the latest battles between the Japanese and Chinese. In the same way, I can take a look anywhere in the world, although the fog of war element will prevent me from seeing what many regions are doing. Yet even where the action is hidden out of the player's line of sight, the Supreme Ruler engine resolves all unit and region simulations accurately in real time with no AI cheating or shortcuts. And it does all this with no hard limits on the number of units or size of armies that a player can build. The only restrictions are money and resources. The development done over many years in the Supreme Ruler simulation engine allows players to have battles that rage throughout the world featuring thousands of units while you can still zoom in and directly control the actions of a skirmish on a single small front. Even the units and equipment available to each region are accurately researched, featuring dozens of details from attack and defensive strength, close combat capabilities, fuel and ammo use, spotting, and special attributes such as bridging and airdrops. There are many game elements we have that help players manage the scope of the game. Minister controls, the ability to set priorities for different theaters and battle zones, and the ability to adjust the initiative of individual units. It is the tactical war game element of Supreme Ruler 1936 that is one of my favorites. Once you've set the path of your region through trade, diplomacy, and economic buildup, you can take direct control of your armies with a level of detail, depth, and scope that just isn't available with any other strategy game. I hope you support Supreme Ruler 1936, and I look forward to your comments on the forums.